All right, quick lesson here. Coming off of a private lesson with someone that wanted to learn about kind of achieving deep saturations of color through um, layered transparent dye based inks, okay? Now, one of the things that they did was um, that I suggested if they wanted some really super bright tones is to try and um, pick up some Marvy inks if possible. Now, you can achieve these types of things with other brands of inks, but just the intensity and that top end Oh, kind of vibrancy really comes about by um, some of the Marvy inks. Now, you don't need a lot of Marvy inks. And, you know, if you don't have any, um, they're kind of discontinued at this point in time, but Uchida still has some. But even if you have like one or two inks, you can um, inject them. What I mean by that is just layer one of the Marvy inks in with whatever brands of other dye based inks that you have for that top end um, intensity, okay? But they had a few, um, especially of the green tones, and I thought it'd be a good idea to do, you know, a lesson that kind of incorporates the things that we learned into scenes. So we did this kind of northern lights type of thing. That tends to be a really dramatic um, looking uh, visual scenario. Okay, so what one of the things that we did was um, we used antique linen as a base layer for one of the... Um, cards just to see if we can see a difference and then one we just went straight on with only Marvy inks and kind of a range of green tones and then we also threw in some yellow. Now I, I use a lot of um, inks when I'm doing this type of technique or going for this type of really super deep saturated look but even for me I went you know even more more than I usually do just because when you're teaching this type of um, technique here you want to people to kind of learn the process, but it's also about getting the feel of it when we're layering these inks on top of one another and just getting the feel of it and how that feels to kind of move ink around on a surface that starts getting super saturated with ink, both on the surface and a little bit in the pulp and how that feels when it's being applied, okay? Because it gets a, it's a little bit more, um, there's a little bit more friction and drag with our applicators. We just use paper towels um, to do this with. And you can feel there's a difference when the surface is a little bit more moist and when it gets really super saturated with tones, okay? But one of the things I learned just from going with this extreme type of um, addition of color and media on the surface was, um, I usually don't do this. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll add in, we'll work through um, some light tones into the darker tones. But one of the things that I did was I circled back around a lot of times and I'll add in some lighter tones. But this time we really went back in once we got to, I don't know, kind of the darker green tones, a pine green, a straight, you know, just neutral green, bottle green. But we went back to these tones right here and layered some more right over the top of it and even into black. And one of the things I was kind of surprised at, but I don't know, I shouldn't be because I know that the ink starts to kind of float on the surface. The more ink that you layer down on there, it's just not absorbing into the page as much, but we laid down some black on top of ours, but the, see these really fine kind of glowing streaks in there like that? That was kind of achieved by going back in with our lighter tones and we dragged ink back into that black and it revealed kind of more of these more graceful types of um call it curtains you know like light curtains back in there and that i don't know that kind of surprised me just to the degree to which we can remove and move around some of that black so this is black right in here it's not a straight black because we've kind of wiped back into it so it's kind of a richer deeper tone okay but anyways i stamped out um one of my images right over the top of that. And I was going to do, um, uh, finish off this piece with some additional imagery on here, which I'll do right now. Now, normally, I don't know, when I think about Northern Lights, I'm thinking about Northern, you know, areas uh, where you'd be able to see this type of thing. Um, but I'm going to use some of my desert imagery on here, you know. So what, you know, there's, there's Northern Lights in the desert now or something like that. Um, uh, you know, if you do this like this way, that would tend to look a little bit more like a horizon glow. But on this one, though, we've kind of predominantly have um, kind of a light to dark type of transition up here. 
Um, so I see this as being kind of a, you know, this is the, the format here. It's more vertical like this. But I've seen these types of colors and, you know, out in um, other areas other than, you know, northern areas um, in like a twilight type of situation. Really, really cool looking. But anyways, I thought we can go for some really um, tr dramatic looking, um, I don't know, kind of uh, desert imagery in this scenario here, this lighting scenario. Um, by the way, these were dye-based inks on glossy cardstock, as you can see. Not glossy photo paper, okay? You can't do this type of streaking with dye-based inks on top of photo paper because it has an emulsion coating as opposed to a clay coating on the cardstock. So it, it really similar in looks in terms of the, the raw material, you know, glossy cardstock and glossy photo paper. But it takes inks very differently, you know, just because photo papers are really meant to dry, you know, take your inks and dry them very quickly and have them set up. Where on this type of cardstock like this, you want to be able to manipulate the colors after they've been applied on top of there, which, again, you know, glossy photo paper won't allow for that. Now, you, you can go for some other types of techniques probably on photo papers. You can even print out um, a background of a northern lights or something like that on photo paper through your inkjet printer and just do what we call photo stamping and just stamping your imagery on top of a photo print of an actual you know photograph or something like that um, and that would be cool but uh, in the creation of our um backgrounds like this custom made you know i don't know whatever northern lights like this or uh I don't know, horizon glows things like that you know that we're talking about glossy card stock okay can you do it on matte or you know a semi-gloss you can you know i would go with the card stock again that has that clay coating on top but you're just gonna have to super saturate um your inks and i would go i would probably not use pads i would use re-inkers on your sponge applicator or something like that and get it really saturated it's going to look flatter and less intense because you got a lot of those inks that are absorbing into the paper which happens on the glossy cardstock but just not as much because it's more sealed off of course with that glossy coating okay now when i'm applying these um, images over the top of my backgrounds right here i kind of hold for a little bit longer than i normally would if i'm stamping on just a bare piece of paper that hasn't been inked up with anything yet um, but on this one here, now my, my uh, inks in the background are already dry because this has been sent around for a little bit, but um, you do get, see, I got a little bit of that, what they call fish iron right there. I don't know if you could see it right there, but you know, some of these areas of my um, black image, especially when you're using solid imagery like that, um, it kind of puddles up underneath here. And like I said, this is kind of sealed off well, it's not really sealed off, but it's it's a little bit moist still from the um, you know the applications of these inks down there. So just you know allow that ink to transfer a little bit longer than you normally would when you have this amount of ink saturation already on your surface. Okay, so I could have held that down a little bit longer, but I don't know that looks fine to me. So going on with these. Um, Joshua trees right here. Let's see, I might use my organ pipe as well. Let's see. That might be a little bit big. Kind of composing right here on the fly. Mm. Hmm. Let's do that. Let's add in a little some of these rocks. I'll just kind of use the top portion on a couple of these. Okay, I'm probably using about one-third, I guess, of the top of this um, rock cluster. 
maybe a little bit more, maybe half of the image, just coming up from the base right there. And then I'll plant another um, kind of Joshua tree in the background behind these rocks. I don't I just wanted to give it a little bit more of a foundation right here. Uh, just for variation. I mean, you can stamp whatever you want in here. But remember, if you're doing it over a pre-colored stamp background, or not stamp background, pre-colored background like that, I'm stamping largely um, silhouette types of imagery on over the top of it. But if you have an open one, just know that, you know, these, all that texturing colors or that are going to show right through, like if it's an outline style of stamp that's really open on the inside. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go with a little bit of a mask right here to put this smaller Joshua tree, or in this case, it represents something a little bit more distant, you know, I don't know, a few yards away from us. And we'll get that stamped out. And let's see, I'm, again, I'm kind of stamping and holding for a little bit. Like so. Okay. And let's see. I have a really small one here. I was just logged on to Facebook and I was looking at, um, you know, some suggested groups or something like that for me. And uh, there's a lot of uh, desert wildflowers blooming right now. I don't know if it's super bloom, but I think it is just based on, you know, um, what I saw. But um, we had a lot of rain here in uh, California, Southern California at least. And uh, when we get regular rains through... I don't know, like the fall months and winter, um, the spring flowers out in the uh, the upper deserts um, are really a, quite a spectacular show. All right, so we have something like that. I think that's really fun looking. Okay, now one of the things I'm going to do is I'll add in some green and white little stars up into my sky. I'm adding it in a couple of the green tones to kind of, you know, match the, um, the color scheme of the scene. And I'll do it in a couple different tones now. Now, one of the things I was teaching today, I was showing, is um, I splatter painted these stars on here with some paint, but you've noticed some of them are white and some of them are kind of green. You can also do this, like I splatter paint some white down on you know my background sometimes, or a lot of times. And then I was showing them that, you know, if you don't want them, all of your stars to be white, Okay, you can just go back in with some color and then tint them, you know, and you can color them so that some of the stars look brighter and some are duller. And then what that does is it creates a little bit of spatial uh, visual space in between the stars within your scene like that. So the whole idea of the, the lesson was color depth, right? it looks like there's a lot of saturated deep tones within a you know, flat surface like this. But you can also kind of enhance that whole idea of the illusion of space with different colored textures in here in the form of dots. So you're kind of following suit and doing the same type of thing with another medium, in this case, you know, a paint pen or, you know, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is a splatter painted, um, um, opaque, um, 
white paint. All right, so you can see these little stars up there. You can see a lot of stars out in uh, kind of the open desert areas. I really love it. <laughs> the deserts are really great because usually where I am, there's a lot of like fog and kind of overcast, you know, skies usually, plus the city lights. But in the desert, there's deserts, there's just less, you know, there's less, um, you know, um, kind of moisture in the air. So I don't know, it just seems like the stars are so much uh, more distinct out there like that. But um, there you go, a little bit of a kind of a, you know, whatever, deep sky area. Now, one of the things I was mentioning to them too was um, it's a good idea to spray seal your pieces. I'm looking at these pieces and they haven't dulled out too much, but if you're using another brand of inks, it looks like this when the inks are really wet, okay? But sometimes when they dry, or a lot of times when they dry, they, they dry dull, okay? Marvy inks don't do that because there's just, I don't know, there's something they don't use in the binder of the inks um, to make them thicker. Marvy inks are a little bit thinner in viscosity. But one of the things that you do is after, after you get your tones laid out like this, and I have lessons online of how to do these Northern Lights types of things. I, th I think I've done it. I don't know, multiple times in different color schemes. But what you do is if you're using other type brands of inks, you spray seal the uh, pieces, preferably before they dry too much. I, I, I'm convinced that when they dry dull and you spray seal them, you, you kind of resurrect the intensity and depth and glow and saturation of a kind of a moist, wet, freshly applied ink. But I'm convinced that if you do it kind of a little bit before these dry completely, I think it just retains much more of the um, the vibrancy and depth of uh, you know those color applications in there. Okay, so anyways, these are the Northern Lights type of thing. But one of the things I was mentioning because we ran out of time with the um, lesson, um, we're having just too much fun watching these things develop. And then I don't know it, when I when I saw that. Um, and it was with them too. This was a you know Zoom lesson. When I when they said on their paper too, I don't know what type of paper they were using, what brand, but um, theirs too. It was just so much more vibrant when we went back with the lighter tones and went just went straight into the uh, you know additional layering. So it's kind of a circular process. You add light to dark, but then you circle back around and you go back with the lighter tones again. You don't go all the way through it again, but maybe just go through all these different colors like this all the way to black and then you go back to a couple of the lighter brighter tones and that was really cool to see okay so let's show i wanted to show one more thing but like i said we just ran out of time but i wanted to show this type of brighter color scheme you know in a grassy scenario because if we're doing scenic stamping a lot of times we're using um you know there's grassy meadows so uh, someone was saying that they, um, that they, you know, the Easter, they wanted to do some Easter cards, but they were thinking about, um, you know, all they want to do right now is like stampscapes. Um, and I said, well, you know, you can do stampscapes imagery, but one of the things that I do for Easter, it's more representational. It's not stamping out, you know, I mean, you could do, um, you know, cross and, you know, resurrection, everything like that, you know, or, you know, the, some of the, other things like um, Easter eggs, Easter bunnies, and things like that. But one of the things I do for um, Easter cards is I do like spring, you know, a lot of um, revival growth and, um, you know, grassy meadows and things like that. So it's more of a seasonal type of thing or representational. And okay, so I wanted to show um, them how to utilize this type of color scheme, you know, deep saturated greens or something like that but within kind of a grassy meadow area right here so i'm not going to do um like a full scene but i'm just i just want to show some of these grasses in here okay so let's see let's start off with um some base layer tint here let me i was just going to use my same little ripped cloth right here they had some makeup wedges too that would have worked good but we just kind of used the uh the paper towels i like the paper towels because they're very absorbent and when you're wanting to transfer a lot of ink on your paper, you have to have a, um, 
a material or tool that's going to absorb a lot of moisture. So sponges and paper towels work really great for that because that's what they're kind of designed for. They're designed for wet media. Um, so let's see, let's, let me take a look at some of these colors right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do this grassy little area down here. I'm gonna start off with, I had them start off with um, some antique linen um, on their piece. I'm just gonna do this grassy slope right here. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit of a slope like this. Okay. I'm gonna just add down a lot of this thing because you can see it doesn't have to be super careful. <laughs> it can be streaky or whatever, but I'm just getting some of this antique linen down. You can use basically any of your, you know, I wouldn't use red for grasses or something like that, but here's some peeled paint right here. Okay, so I'm just getting some of that down there. It's like a little slathering of ink, okay? But then I'm gonna go through some of my grassy colors here. So I'll go through some of my greens and I'll show you how I do my grasses right here, okay? So this is a pretty bright green from Marvy. It's the number 11 light green. And it's super bright. It's the one of those colors that you can add to any brand of inks and it'll really brighten things up in terms of your grasses. It's too bright in terms of grasses, in fact, but it's going to be more of a sub layer of colors. Okay, I won't be able to see a lot of it, but it will affect um, the end result is in terms of the overall look of the piece. Okay, so in other words, I don't want light green grass, okay, but I want it to be a component in terms of the richness of a grassy area right there. So that glow of those tones like that, mostly I've gone over it with a lot of other greens in here, but it's that green underneath there that's kind of glowing and showing through um, that gives it death. Dye based inks are all transparent, so the colors underneath, you know, are usually influencing what we can see, again, in the end result, because the other colors on top are see-through. It's like glazing a, glazing a turkey or something like that in the oven, you know, the more kind of glazes you put on there, the deeper and richer that, you know, that uh, skin looks. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. Okay, going on with a little bit of green here. Okay. Like that. You can see that kind of glow that's happening right in here. And that looks so much better and richer than this is this is just green just directly on top of white paper. And you can see the difference right here of that green up there and that one right there. This is just so much more of a richer tone. Okay, now I'm going to stamp out some of my imagery at this point in time so I can see where my textures are going to go. Now, I could have stamped out my textures before, but I just wanted you to see kind of the general type of color application that I utilize when I'm doing um, grassy areas. Okay, it's kind of the same type of thing. Now, I'm just doing it in a different direction. This one right here, these two are more kind of vertical like this. And this one, I just have it going on this grassy slope, but here's these same types of streaks that are running in here. Now, again, this one's not going to get as dark because it's not a nighttime sky that I'm doing right down here in this grassy meadow. But I want to stamp out my grasses. I'll go with a pretty dark green right here. This is a bottle green. And then I'll use other tones of green up here. This is the grass texture. I'll use a couple different grass um, textures. You're going to use one, um, but I, th this one I'm just going to use uh, a couple different sizes right here. Now, right here on these impressions, I'm just going for kind of the top of this. This is the full stamp like that, but I'm also just going like that just to get some top textures right in here just to build up a little bit more depth as opposed to stamping the full thing again like that, which you can do. It just depends on how much area, you know, we're, we're talking about um, covering. Okay, now this is the sedge filler, and we're going in here like this, and I'll go right to, you know, the top of that kind of that ridge that I've created here, 
we'll just go right down in here into this lower area, get a little bit of texture going in here. So see, there's a little bit of a difference in texture. It looks like this grass is a little bit closer to us and this one's a little bit farther away. You can usually use one or the other though, you know, this whole sedge filler can be used in here. This grass texture can go up here. It just kind of narrows the space a little bit um, when we do something like that, or it just, um, doesn't represent something so close to us as a, you know, using kind of a larger grass texture. Okay, so I'm moving along pretty fast here, but this is, like I said, this is like a follow-up to a, you know, a private lesson here, but um, okay, now I have my different textures in here, my grass textures. You can see this grass texture right here at the top of this right here. It's a little bit darker, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to develop my shadow areas in, within this grassy field now. And that's one of the differences between something like this general glowy area in here where it doesn't really matter where the streaks end up being, you know, because it's just open sky. But on here we have these little grassy textures in here. So I'm going to work around those a little bit more. Okay, so in some of these areas where it's a little bit... Uh, more textural and dark. I'll just kind of make those areas a little bit darker. I want these little tufts of grass to kind of um, change in value. Now, see this right here? Just a little bit of streak coming from this way over here and right down here. Now it looks like this grassy meadow is a little bit more undulated or yeah you know what I mean it's it's varied in terms of um, grass depth um, just having this light dark you know or dark light darker light like that type of thing kind of happening throughout this uh, piece right here let's see let's go a little bit darker up here just you know again for variation it's not like Oh, that has, you know, I, I, I put that darkness in the wrong spot. It could have been darker here and lighter over here, too. You know, I, I'm always kind of mentioning these types of things just so you don't get kind of like stuck on, oh, wait a minute, you know, which area should be light? You know what I mean? You're just kind of varying it a little bit more. Okay, let me show you this with the rip paper towel, too. Um, let's go in and hit some like more specific shadow areas like this. So I'm adding this right around this rip paper towel. That. So I get this little bit of a crisper kind of, um, you know, varied area as opposed to just wiping, you know, tone in like that. And a paper towel is really perfect for um, a grassy area like that. See that right there? It's nice and varied. But you can see the richness of that green in there. It's kind of glowing. I don't like that just as is though. It's a little bit too green. So one of the things I was going to show, but like I said, we ran out of time, was um, the... Actually, I might finish off this scene. I was thinking about planting a tree up here and that would look kind of cool. Um, but see all these little areas like that? Okay, well, let's make it a little bit more earthy. One of the things I wanted to show them was in a grassy, meadowy type of um, scenario like this. When I just work through these grasses, it looks like a really bright green. And I, I think it looks fine as is, but I'll show you one little trick that I do. So you're, you can go back to your, you know, if you don't have like a Marvy Brown, any kind of brand of brown, don't use a Stazon Brown or something like that. That's, you know, that's a different type of ink. It's a solvent ink that dries really fast, but um, your Distress Inks, Antique Linen, Walnut stain, something like that, some kind of brown tone, earthy, brownish, ten, you know, tin tones like that. But let's go into this green area and bring in some of that brown. I think this tends to kind of mellow out my grasses a little bit and make them look, you know, a little bit more earthy, but still nice and vibrant and um, light. Okay, so. Let's go in here like this, and I'll add it into my darker areas. Not so much in the lighter areas right now, 
but I'll add this down and you, I'll show you the difference between one side and the other, okay? So see that right there? That's that brown added in, and that's just straight green over there, okay? I like a little bit of brown in there. Uh, maybe it's because uh, I'm in California or something like that. <laughs> so the hills, you know, most of the year, the brown, you know, even in the springtime, sometimes when we don't get enough uh, rain, you know, and we're in drought for years and years or something like that. But see that? That brownish tinge in there is kind of a nice addition, like that. You can do the masking, you can, you know, add that down like in that mask as well if you want to, or something like that. Alright, now, um, let's see. Let's go in and add a little bit of additional foreground in here. All right, now I'm doing this in black. Maybe I'll stamp some out in like a green too or something. Let's see how this goes. But this represents something, you know, an area of the scene that now we're a lot closer to, okay? See as I'm changing the angles a little bit and layering these, this grass down like that. Okay, so you get this nice grassy meadowy area like that. Okay, I like this scene. Let's let's you know, let's, or whatever this exercise right here. Let's go ahead and finish this off a little bit and do some sort of you know scene scenario. Let's do this. Let's go back in and add in some more of this. Um, antique linen up here. I'll get some kind of a little, I don't know, sunrise, sunset type of uh, thing going on. I don't know if it's dusk or dawn or neither, or either. <laughs> okay, so I just get a little bit of slathering of ink in there. Let's see, what color should we do? Let's go for something kind of warm and, I don't know, Pinkish, maybe oranges, orangish. This is a rosemary. So any kind of like a pale pink, you know, if you have like a pastel one. This one's a little bit brighter and warmer, but um, you know, um, bubblegum pink or something like that would be good. All right, so just adding that down. That was a little bit too bright up here, so I'm kind of turning my applicator a little bit, but it's getting drier on here as I add, you know, more of this down on here. Oops, look at all that. <laughs> oh, my fingers have like black all over it from touching the bottom right here, so I have all these smudgies up here. I might be going a lot darker up there. Here, I need to watch my fingers here. I'll I'll use this right here. Here, I'll show you how, to, let's see if we can do some uh, repair work up here. Okay, so change of uh, plans in terms of the sky. I was just gonna go for something very, very light up top, but now that I've smudged it all over up there, this black right down here is really quite wet still, so I should have remembered that or noticed it. Okay, so I'm going a little bit darker, so we're going for more of a, I don't know, maybe a deep twilight. <laughs> We've gone past sunset, I think, on here, because I have to go pretty dark up there. Oh, I'm, I'm going to put something in front of it, too, so it's not going to matter as much as it, you know, how it looks right now. Let's go for some of this deep lilac here. It's a little bit more of like a, you know, a violet tinge. Again, kind of layering our inks down there for um, kind of a deep saturation. Okay, let's go for... Um, let's try this plum right here. No, wine. 
Okay, so see this, I keep getting a little bit darker up there, so it cuts the contrast between those little smudgy fingerprints of mine and the background. So we're bringing up the background darker, making these smudgy, you know, fingerprints a little bit less, uh, whatever, obvious, you know, distinct. Some things like this, um, when you're doing things like this, this is when you come up with your best co color combinations because if you have to kind of mask something over in scenic stamping, you're often adding more inks, more imagery, things like that. So sometimes the, air, the best color combinations come about from something like that. Okay, we used that brown down in that grassy area before. Let's go ahead and use some of that up here in the sky. Adds a little bit of warmth up there. You can see that right there, that brown, you know, it's darkening it too, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, those little smudges aren't quite as uh, obvious with each darker tone that you use. Up here too, I can kind of mask a lot of that with the use of the, um, the Alto Cumulus Cloud too. I just happen to have this one out on my desk. I was using it for something. Let's go ahead and use that one. Um, let's do that in wine again. I'll use the larger one. Larger or smaller is fine. The larger one will just cover that whole area you know, much faster. I might do this one in two different colors as well. And let's do this. See how this is transitioning from darker to lighter down here? I'm going to add, or not add, but I'm going to wipe off some of the ink off of the lower section right down here so that it's drier so that it goes from a little bit more of a darker impression to a lighter impression because it's going from wet to dry. There's just less ink on this bottom portion. Now this isn't going to be a really dark impression right here. The, you know, that wine is not a dark color to begin with. Okay. You see that right there? So that worked really good. That in, kind of incorporates in those little dark smudgy fingerprints of mine too. It really kind of obscures them. So scenic stamping, sometimes it confuses people. They think it's harder to do sometimes if they haven't done it before, because you know we can do so much overlapping. And one of the things about um, that is people can't tell what you've done first. Did you stamp out your cloud first or add the tone in there? You know what I mean? Other types of stamping, a lot of times, what they're doing is they're stamping out their imagery and then they're coloring it in it's you know it's that step all the time but seeing stamp and you can stamp at your imagery like i can add more color over that top of that if i want even wanted to at this point in time just wait till it's dry you know but you know you can kind of just go back and forth um there's no rules um set rules here if you're coloring an imagery that's an outline stamp you know you can't have all this color laid down and stamp right over the top of it without all those colors showing right through it. Okay, let's use a little bit of this dark brown now. Up here, I'll use a little bit of that. There's a little bit of a darker tonal sky. You know, to stay in the theme of that kind of rich application of ink and color like that. Let me try something too. Let me go with the brown or dark brown. Let's see, let's wipe off a little bit of it down here. Let's go for a little bit of a dark brown area up here. So we're transitioning from lighter impressions of these clouds to darker ones, just like you'd see out in nature. Variations in value, okay? So see that right there? And of course we can't see my little smudgy, you know, fingerprints anymore. Oh, yeah, which is the, you know, really good thing. <laughs> Let's go for a couple trees on here. Okay. But you can see the deep color vibrancy in both areas with the use of multiple layers of transparent color. Okay. All right, let's see what we have here. Let's go with this one. 
Um, let me try something here. Let me try this one in a bottle green. off that trunk a little bit where it goes into the grass or you can mask off and plant it in the grass that way either way but I'm just kind of wiping off the bottom I'll go with this um, winter ash tree over here Okay, and again, I'm kind of holding this down for a little bit longer than normal um, with uh, this type of, um, you know, super layered color application in terms of the amount. And by the way, so a lot of people ask me this when they see these videos, um, if they haven't seen them before, but this is an acrylic block here, but this little material on here is called tag and peel, and it permanently adheres to the, the block, okay, because it's just different. This side is tacky, the other side is like an adhesive, but um, it allows for the temporary mounting of your um, rubber stamps on onto a block of wood. The rubber isn't inherently kind of tacky like clear stamps are, okay? Uh, the rubber stamps, you know, the rubber versions give you a better impression quality than uh, clear stamps. Nothing against clear stamps, though. You know, they definitely have their place in the industry and kind of what got a lot of people into um, stamping. Okay, on this one right here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wipe off the bottom of this tree a little bit. It looks like it's just going into the grass, because if I stamp this whole thing, that's look like it's on a more solid surface, but if I kind of wipe off some of that, it looks like it's going into this grassy kind of, you know, in this case, slope here a little bit more. So I'm going to go over here. This, and this will be kind of in the foreground. All right, so we have this like little grassy sl slope with um, our ash trees here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this real spring-like though. Um, let's go back to. A couple are bright tones like that, but watch this. I'll come into it with um, Let's see if I have a pink. I tend to forget what paint pen colors I have. Um, let's go with this pink right here. And I'll, th these are a little bit of a larger um, paint pen size. These are just some smaller. See, this is kind of the color scheme that's down here. Green, pink. Yeah, there's a little bit of white in there. Okay. I'm going to go in and... See that we have little stars for textures in this piece right here up in the sky. I'm going to use those same type of element, little dots of color, in my grassy areas to make them look a little bit more and kind of reflective of light. Um, so uh, let's add some of these little, and I'm adding it on. I hope you can see this. I don't know. It's going to be very subtle, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it or not. Especially when it's green on top of green. 
you'll be able to see a little bit more when I use some uh, white in here, okay? But I start off with this green, though, just as a kind of a transition um, texture because it doesn't stand out as much. Now, I used to only use, um, you know, these paint pens didn't exist in a bunch of multicolors in the past, so I'd use just go in there with white. But now there's so many different, uh, you know, there's sets of whole colors out there in uh, ac acrylic paint pens. Okay, that's a little bit of that. Let's move on to white just so you, you'll be able to actually see. Actually, let me use this tan one right here. Yeah, maybe the tan's a little bit more yeah, kind of warm and integrated. Maybe I'll, I'll probably use some white too, but let's go on with this one first. See what it's going to look like in there. Hopefully you can see that, those little crisp little, you know, highlights on, on my uh, my grasses. You can do like a whole meadow full of, you know, bluebells or something like that if you want to uh, as well. There's a little bit of white. Yeah, let's make some of these uh, um, parts of the trunk kind of stand out with um, some highlighting maybe. Like it's Capturing some light in the, uh... in the, uh, setting. Alright, so it makes the, now the trees kind of a little bit more three-dimensional, I think, like that. Now let's go and add um, some little uh, blossoms to these trees. Let's hit like a springtime type of scenario here. So let me add in these little white uh, and pink blossoms onto my trees here. Kind of starting off with this 0.7 uh, millimeter pen here. Yeah, at least on this background tree, maybe I'll use the, uh, the you know, the three millimeter on this foreground one right here. I thought, man, maybe I might want to go to like two, you know, you know, super, oh, I don't know, whatever obvious uh, with these blossoms yet. Because I didn't know how much these uh, this white dot would stand out against the background. It stands out a little bit more over that darker area, but I think this looks pretty good. So let's just keep adding it down. I'm doing these little dots around these branches like, you know, they're blooming, you know, spring blossoms on here. Okay, I've got, you know, I've gone in, you know, completely off of the uh, subject matter in terms of, uh, you know, kind of finishing off this scene. But, hey, you know, I had the time and uh, when you're, you know, stamping something out, if you like what you see, you might as well, you know, keep finishing it. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a kind of a larger little dot here in terms of the uh, little blossoms on here. So you're kind of plain scale against one another. Larger blossoms closer, smaller blossoms, you know, farther away. Maybe I won't use, you know, I'll apply this, this big paint, you know, pen dot a little bit more sparsely though, like this right in here. Okay. But I think that looks really fun. And, oh, just to embellish it, but just a little bit more of a pink blossom on the trees here. It, 
it's kind of a large kind of element, but I'm finding with that pinkish kind of sky area there, this is really kind of blending and kind of harmonizing with that background uh, really nicely. Yeah, I'm, I should probably use this pink one for that background, but I'm going to see if I could just do a tiny little dot. Oh, looks like I can with this one. Sometimes if you do just like a little tiny touch of the paper, you can get a much smaller dot uh, with some of these pens. Okay, that is that on the blossoms right there. It looks real spring-like, I think, you know, and it could be a, you know, Easter card or something like that. And let's go with this one right here. Let's go with the dough. And I'll treat this just like I did the um, tree trunk. So I'll put the dough in some nice thick grass, you know, so I'll wipe off the ink off the bottom of the feet, you know, so it looks like it's standing in the grass. Don't smash down like these small stamps in here. Just light, even pressure like that. Okay. I stamped that out in the uh, the bottle green. I thought I was stamping it out in black, but it actually looks pretty good. It's kind of more integrated into the scene a little bit more, maybe. And then what I'm going to do here, let's add a little bit of texture. One of the things I, again, I didn't really get to, um, in uh, the lesson this afternoon was um, I was going to add a little bit of white pigment ink into the piece. Now on these, we didn't leave room for white pigment ink except for, uh, you know, some of these stars, we can kind of make them glow. But um, on this right here, kind of a soft application of white pigment ink will make some of these other areas that are more saturated with um, ink and color intensity It'll make them look even more intense because we're not going to cover up everything in here, but we're just going to add this element of this soft mist in here where where it's applied, it makes it kind of like more pastel-y looking, okay? All right, 100% cotton cotton ball. Kind of evenly distribute it on the bottom of this cotton and also so the cotton's not all frilly. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of start adding it down into some of these lighter areas. I like adding it at the base of trees because it looks like there's mist down in that area. I'm kind of adding it in the lighter areas right in here where light meets darker, um, you know, an area or object. Okay. So I got see that little mist like that. Let's do it kind of coming up like this. I'll even let's let let's mask this off a little bit, so it's like some of that mist is behind uh, you know a little clump of grass like that. See that right there? It looks like it's glowing. Let's do a little bit uh, around this tree as well. At the base of the tree, and it in like that. The biggest thing if you ever try this is don't do this with a big old sopping wet, you know slathering of a uh, white you know ink you want it real soft and kind of misty so you always want to do it in a very dry brush style of application like that see that kind of mist back in there I know it's a little bit too harsh so I'll spread it around a little bit or kind of move it around slightly kind of dilute it like that and I think at the let's add in a little bit of mist like for this uh, dough here about like that and then just at the base of those legs some of those dots that I laid down are kind of showing up in the dough right there so I'm gonna color those in the dots that I already laid down in the meadow are kind of showing through that dough slightly so I'm gonna just color those in with a little paint pen looks like I need to go a little bit darker
All right. And see this kind of horizon right up here where there's that lighter area? I'm going to add a little bit of this on that background kind of slope edge, okay? Like some light is kind of just kind of coming over that. And I'll put some in the sky like that. So you have this soft light kind of entering the scene a little bit. Let's remove some of this over here. We'll make it a little bit more subtle. The, the white ink, you can kind of manipulate it after you've already applied it, especially if it's on like a, you know, like a glossy surface. Semi-gloss, you can do that as well. I'm going to put a little bit of this lighting on the, the background tree. I want a little bit more uh, wider area of it like that, like on that side of that tree like that. Okay, now here's what I do too. See these little blossoms up in the uh, tree right here? I'm going to add in to this lower section like some of the uh, little petals of the, uh, the blossoms of uh, kind of fall into the ground right here. It's kind of decorated our you know, little surface area like that. And I'll put some of the uh, little blossoms from this distant trail do them in the, uh, the smaller uh, paint pen. This. I'll add in some pink too. Alright, so something like that. See, so yeah, it kind of brings to life that little area in there. But going back to the, my main purpose right here, this is your Aurora Borealis and bright tones like that, making it look like it's glowing. I like to kind of give the illusion like light is coming from kind of within the card and out by creating that kind of light source like that. But here, this area down here is, but just those streaks are kind of more this way this time in terms of the slope, all right? Doesn't have to be a slope. I mean, it could be just you know, vertical, you know, horizontal area like that. You can put a cabin up, you know, within the grass or whatever you want to do. But again, those um, kind of deeper saturations and color glows achieved by using multiple tones, okay? Doesn't have to be like eight colors or something like that. You know, you can do it with three or four, but the bottom line is it's just much richer looking. This is just a straight application of... Uh, um, this is green right here. So that's kind of the color that I used right there, but you can see just how much like those undertoned layers, base layer colors are affecting that overall look. So again, that's, um, green right there. And, um, so is this one right here, but look how dull that looks, you know, without having, you know, some base layer brighter tones. So mix and match your um, brand of pads, no problem, okay? But just go start off with those lighter tones and brighter ones if you can. If it's just, if it's dull tones, you can you still achieve kind of a richer look, but if you kind of have those, you know, I'm playing a little bit of temperature here too, with that warmth of the, uh, the yellow greens underneath here, okay? Uh, and remember, the browns are in here as well. So kind of you can play around, you know, with your color schemes and uh, do some color blends and, uh, um, you know, variations like this one right here was using, you know, the brown. This is brown right here. And uh, that's that wine right there. But I did add the, you know, the darker um, brown tones into the scenario. So it looked like something like this. You know, so just line up your pads and see if it looks like it, you know, roughly blends to the eye. And if it blends to the eye in your pads, then it'll blend on the paper just fine. Okay. So anyways, but it do some experiments. But um, the most important colors on here, one of the things that I was going over in my workshop was, you know, 
those base layer colors like that, you really want to get a deep saturation of them, okay? And then if it isn't quite as saturated, like ours were looking really anemic compared to what they came out to be, we just went back in with those lighter tones again and went right back in there and put additional layers, maybe two or three, of those lighter colors that we have already used. So now, now preferably you're going to do that before you add in all these other kinds of embellishments. But let's say I just did that background with the greens laid down, no imagery on top of it yet. And that kind of wine, pinkish wine sky like that. If you get down into the darker tones, in this case up here, I would just use more of that pink and go right over the top of it and see if it, we can get, you know, a stronger glow going. And with this one right here, it was the... Um, you know, that lighter green um, tone. I think I use the distressings too, you know, where we just kind of put that slathering down of, uh, you know, base layer ink. And uh, that creates a kind of a nice um, surface to blend on top of. It's a little bit harder to blend in um, some of our darker tones if the paper is really dry. You know, it's a little bit kind of clunkier like that, okay? But it just really glides down when you kind of achieve a really good saturation with your um, lighter tones. So you're coloring with the lighter tones, in other words, and also kind of lubricating the page because it's getting wetter on the surface, but also some of that moisture, I think, starts to go in some of the pulp of the paper. So your ink kind of starts to float a little bit more. I mean, it's not completely floating on there. It's, you know, staining the surface, but, um, you know, these darker tones like that, I'm, you know, you're really able to wipe and spread them, blend really freely the more saturated your card becomes sometimes it becomes so saturated and it's hard to apply because it's not transferring on the paper in that case just let it set for a little you know a few minutes let it dry a little bit and then go back in with the darker tones you know go grab a, a drink or something like that or whatever go answer emails you know and come back to it and uh you know just kind of finish it off like that all right anyways thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions drop me a note in the comments section